Hey audio friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a tale of two Grados. So we've got the SR80E, this is the older model, not the X, which is the current model. And then we've got the RS2E. So uh, these Grados, right? I, I've heard in the past people make claims like, oh, all Grados sound the same and stuff like that. That is absolutely not the case, all right? Now, do they have like a house sound? I would definitely say there's something to that, uh, but to what degree and how well it's pulled off, that's, that's definitely another matter. So we will look at the SR80E versus the SR2E. We'll draw some comparisons. And then I'm also gonna throw um, some comparisons to the Sennheiser 660S in there, just because for me, this is kind of a reference open back dynamic that's, you know, two to $300, depending on what you pay for it and how you find it, all that stuff, all right? Now, uh, build on these Grados is uh, horrible, <laughs> okay? Uh, you probably knew that was coming if you've, if you've ever had a Grado or you've ever, you know, listened to anything about Grados. It's, it's pretty pitiful, all right? So, um, I mean, I've got these big kind of chunky pads on here right now, and you can see I had a variety of pads here. Uh, I've got these kind of like little donut pads, and then these are like big donut pads. Um, these are both super cheap pads that don't feel very nice. And then these were the stock SR80 E pads, um, which are kind of like, I don't know, like big Yaxi pads almost type things, okay? On the RS2E, when I traded for these, uh, they came with uh, Deconi pads, which these are so much more comfortable, like way, way, way more comfortable, all right? But let's just take all the pads off um, for the time being and we can kind of look at these puppies side by side. Now, you're going to notice a lot of similarities, which um, I'd say makes the SR80 maybe like a better value because it's, I, I don't know, I don't know what the RS2E cost or if you can even buy one still, but I traded something that I think was around like 350, 400 bucks for it, which seemed to be about market value somewhere around there. So, I mean, obviously the big difference here is the wood housing for the driver on the SR2E. And I, I gotta say though, I mean, I do really like the way Grados look. I think they have a very distinct kind of classic look to them that, I, I don't know, it appeals to me and you guys know I'm a sucker for wood headphones. So I think that's kind of cool about the RS2E. I mean, the SR80 is just plastic and just, I mean, it feels as bad as it looks. It just, I don't know. It, it just doesn't inspire confidence. It, it feels like a $15 headphone. You know what I mean? Like just, just nothing to it. And I mean, so the downside there is the RS2E, like outside of the wood cups and like the, the leather. And I think that's actually real leather on the headband there. Outside of that, um, I mean, it's the same. So they still don't feel very good, but I do like the wood and I like the leather. It just... It, it's just nothing great all right the the yoke system is just you know it slides around here it's not very tight this is plastic and this is plastic okay so the yoke there is plastic so it's it doesn't really hold its shape you kind of reset it every time you put it on at least that's how it was for me um I, as far as comfort goes Depending on what pads you have on them, I'm gonna stick the Deconis back on on these guys. Um, and you can see just how easy it is just to swap these things like right on here. Just they just slap right on, right? Um, with the Deconi pads, these are I I wouldn't exactly call them comfortable, but they're not terrible, right? They're tolerable, is probably where it's at, and that's just. Again, the padding on the headband is just very insignificant. There's actually more padding on the SR80E, but it just none of it just feels very nice, right? Um, they are very lightweight, so that's a bonus for them. They're not terrible with the Deconi pads, all right? I mean, with these pads on it, it was okay. Um, the stock SR80 pads were fine. These pads, uh, I think, feel pretty nasty um, just all around, so I don't really like those. Um, that material. So I don't know, the the build just isn't great. You can see they both have, you know, uh, attached cables, which again is kind of a bummer. I don't like them. Uh, you know, it, it's just a typical 3.5 millimeter and comes with, you know, a little adapter to go to quarter inch. The, 
The SR2E has this chunkier cable, but I actually see that as a downside. Um, so it's, it's bigger, it's thicker. You can see the difference here, right? Like see how much bigger the SR2E, the SR2E is. And you'd think that'd be a good thing, but it's just such a big, heavy cable for this like lightweight portable headphone. Like this accounts, I bet you this accounts for like half the weight of this headphone, honestly, which is a bummer, right? I would rather see a, obviously a cable that you could disconnect, maybe just like 3.5 millimeters coming into the bottom here. And then just a lightweight, like even something like an IEM cable, like an MMCX or something like that, I think would be an improvement. So you could have something nice and short so you could use it with a portable player and that you could change out for balance you know um as i was testing these out my main device here was my x can you know i i've said many times before this is kind of my go-to you know bluetooth dac amp thing this is still the one that i i go to and and love to use i like the sound of this thing so that's mainly what i use for these all right um, that's probably beating the build to death. Okay. Not great. Not great, but it has that distinctive Grado style, which is kind of cool, admittedly. Sound. Okay. This is the biggie here. So they have this Grado house sound, which you probably have heard of is like very kind of edgy and in your face and, you know, maybe not the most resolving thing in the world. So the SR80E I'm not like does not impress me at all. I find this to be a pretty intolerable headphone. I think it's pretty shrill. Um, it, it's just it's just so sharp and etched and just I don't know. I mean things just feel things just feel just over sharpened. If you've seen those images uh, that people just over sharpen online that are just like way over saturated, like HDR apps do this where it's just super sharpened way oversaturated just over the top like that's the sr80e for me just it doesn't it doesn't do it for me it i would never reach for this headphone and this is actually the second time i've owned them i had them another time i just i picked these up because they were i don't know they either got thrown in on a trade or they were super cheap or something i can't really remember but um i'm just not a huge fan of these right they do have a quality to them that's like they they kind of show you what grado sound is but i think it does i think they do it a disservice though because the sr2e is actually a quite enjoyable headphone which is reasonably resolving and pretty well tuned i would say i mean it's still a very in your face headphone but as far as just the balance throughout the frequency response it's pretty good and the level of like texture and detail that's there honestly really surprised me it's it's so much more smoother than the sr80e so if you if you've tried the sr80e and you're like wow that sound is kind of interesting but it's just too much for me then like the rs2e might be something to look at because i think that it's a pretty good headphone honestly now for 354 dollars i don't know about that technical performance wise i definitely think you can do better for that price but just getting that sound there's something about it it's it's got this it's just got this energy to it and it does have like this kind of open holographic -y imaging to it the separation is pretty decent on it and uh, shockingly enough like the bass is very present and has a good amount of texture which i wasn't really expecting that was like really something that stood out to me um, it, it's a dry headphone, right? Like it, it definitely has this dryness to it and that messes like the timbre just sounds a little off it, as far as things go, but it's not an unenjoyable headphone. Like it is an interesting, fun to listen to headphone, but that's, that's why. So now we'll enter the 660S, right? This I think is a very smooth for the money, you know, 250 bucks, or I think I bought these for less than 200 actually. Like pretty resolving, pretty good imaging, just good timbre, just a good all around easy listening, you know, kind of normal headphone, right? Like this thing I, I think is a good place to start for people looking in about the $200 range for a set of headphones if they want like an open back dynamic. This is my favorite of the six series line. 
Um, I just, I like this headphone. I think it's an easy recommendation, right? And I can listen to this thing and be pretty happy out of different gear, out of the X can. I think it's, it's just perfectly fine. You know, it, it gives me what I want out of my music. It gives me a good amount of separation, good amount of imaging, good amount of detail, natural timbre, right? It's just an easy listening headphone, but it's not really very special though. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just kind of a plain Jane. It's okay right um gets the job done does it fine not gonna stand out in a crowd okay the sr2e while i don't think i'd reach for it as often as i reach for the 660s i do feel like the rs2e offers a little bit something that's it offers something that's more special right its sound is a little more unique and i think that it it sets itself apart from other headphones in just the way that it presents things in such a, just such an energetic way. And I, I don't know, plus it's just cool looking, right? It's just cool. The wood cups are cool and all that, right? So I just think it's a cool headphone and um, I, I think I get it, right? I get what Grado's about now that I've heard the RS2A. I don't feel like when I tried the SR80, I think I had the, S, the SR60 for a while and neither of those headphones I thought, I, I just wasn't impressed with them, okay? But the RS2E, I get it. With the RS2E, I get it. So if you're looking for a Grado, I mean, you could try something like the SR80 just to see if you even have an inkling for that type of sound, but don't think that like no, like all the Grados are gonna sound the same and that if you don't like the SR80, you're not gonna like the SR2E or the S, the RS2E, sorry. And uh, because it smooths out, it it's like you take all the bad things about the SR80E and the RS2E just reins it all in and brings it together into a sound that I think is unique and special and not half bad. I think that's it. <laughs> okay, so. What's your thoughts on Grado? What does the higher end Grado stuff sound like? That's something I'm I'm a little curious about as well. Um, is what does like what does a higher end Grado sound like? I I am intrigued by the RS2E. While I don't think I'm going to keep the RS2E, that doesn't mean that I won't try some more Grados in the future. Um, and then just weigh in on you know, other Grados, how you think they compare? Were you able to stand these? Am I blowing the SR80 out of proportion? I know some people love this headphone, um, so I don't know. And then maybe maybe drop some pad recommendations in too for what you think. I mean, I'll link to these Deconis and I'll link to these other ones that I don't really like, um, but I, I, I'm not sure what else is out there because it seems like there's quite a bit of opportunity for pad swapping and things like that out there. So, so if you got any recommendations for that too, drop that down below. And uh, outside of that, I, I appreciate your support and I thank you for your time. And you know, definitely subscribe if you want more headphone content. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit more than that, you know, check out those affiliate links. And then there's also a Patreon link down there as well. So, with all that being said, uh, I hope to see you in the next one.